Hi everyone, this is Studio X and today we will be learning how to make this cinematic intro. So this will be a two-part tutorial. The first part is going to be inside of Cinema 4D and the second part will be inside of After Effects to add all the other layers and composite it really nicely and make it look very uh, finished and polished. So inside Cinema 4D we are basically going to be making the animated text that you see here. We are going to be making the uh, the text rotating and the firing flames going down. And in After Effects, in the next tutorial, we'll be making these rings and the lens effects and the smoking layers that are um, layered on top of the fire and the small little displacements. Uh, that's about it. So let's, uh, let's get started. So here we have an empty scene inside of Cinema 4D. So what we're going to do now is go to MoGraph and select Mo Text. And here we can type in our text. So let's type in God speed. And in align, I'm going to choose middle because I want it aligned in the middle. And choose any font that you like. I downloaded a font, Go Bold. It looks really nice um, and really clean. So the first thing that I do when I add text is, as you can see, the edge is really, really sharp. So um, if you render it, at all with anything you, you you just you don't see any reflections on it because it's the most perfect 90 90 degree angle ever which doesn't happen in real life there needs to be at least some kind of rounding to it even if it's really really minimal so we're gonna go to caps and just choose fillet cap for both and bring down the radius I'm just gonna do like 0.2 and 0.2 so as you can see it's a very small edge and I'm just going to bring the steps up to maybe like three, nothing too crazy. So as you can see, the edge looks a lot nicer now. So let's zoom back out so if you can start working with the text. I'm sorry if my, uh, if my viewport is really laggy. I'm recording at the same time, so it's, it's going to lag a little bit. It shouldn't be an issue, though. So let's change our settings right away to make it 1920 by 1080. I'm going to choose all my settings already. I'm going to go to physical um, so I can render it with the physical render. And I'm just going to select the depth of field as well. Now I'm going to make a new camera, reset everything to zero. There we go. And I'm just going to pull it back a good bit. There we go. Perfect. So now I'm actually going to group the camera into here. Uh, that way I can animate it going forward and animate rotating up separately and make it really, really nice. Uh, ju it's just going to make the workflow a lot easier than doing it all in the camera layer. So let's click on camera and see what we're looking at. Let's raise it up a little bit. So maybe by like 50, um, maybe a little more, like 80. Yep looks perfectly centered so uh, let's give this maybe a hundred and no let's do 300 frames 300 frames and at frame 160 we're just gonna keyframe the camera and then we're gonna go back to the beginning and we're just gonna rotate it down to where you don't see the text and keyframe here so now what we have is the camera panning up slowly. I'm actually going to offset this a little bit. There we go. So it starts at 40 and it rises up. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to go into our camera and under the object tab, there's a focus object and we're just going to throw the mode text. That way you don't need to worry about um, choosing the focus it just automatically always going to the god speed text is always going to be in focus so that's exactly what we need uh, next thing that we are going to do is we're going to animate the camera moving forward so let's go to I like 
the the size of this so this is going to be our final our final take so in the null we're just going to keyframe it at 200 and um, then we're going to go back to I guess like 40 yeah click frame 40 and just pull it back and uh, hit the keyframe so now let's watch this perfect so now uh, I just want to make the camera animation a little smoother because it does feel like it it becomes a little rough so we're just gonna go into timeline go into our null our camera rotation uh, and we're gonna try to find there it is so I'm just gonna find this rotation here and just press and hold the stick and just move it move it out so now when we're watching this it's a lot smoother perfect so let's save the project just because it's always good to save um, and I'm just gonna make a new folder called tutorial uh, I misspelled it but whatever it doesn't matter and I'm gonna call it tutorial Godspeed okay so um, this title is actually for the film Godspeed which you can find on the Instagram I linked it in the description so this is for this upcoming film you should definitely check it out it looks amazing and it's gonna come out really dope so let's get back into cinema 40 and continue working on this so now that we have the camera animation let's animate the text spinning so to do that select the text go to MoGraph effector oops MoGraph effector and go to random and it automatically selects position you don't need that so uncheck that and check rotation and this is not the one we need so undo this is not the one we need undo this is it okay so we are going to be keyframing this so maybe at frame 180 we're gonna keyframe this at zero degrees and somewhere at frame 60 we're just gonna crank this up i don't know like 140 looks pretty good so let's play this through perfect looks great so now that we have the basic animation um, of the camera we have our movements done so now the only things we need to do is light it texture it and add the flaming fireball things so let's uh, for the lighting we're gonna do this very easily you can just go to Google and type in studio HDRI which is a 360 map basically and we can use it to just light a scene uh, really easy it doesn't even need to be high quality either the picture can be blurry it doesn't really matter I'm gonna go for either this or this I'm let's go for this one and just save this image yeah I'm just gonna save it to the desktop and go into cinema 4d double click here to make a new material double click on the material uncheck color and reflectance go into luminance check that and where it says texture there's the three little dots press on that and select the material that we just uh, the texture that we just downloaded so go to desktop or wherever you saved it select it hit open and select yes so now you have the um, the studio lights basically in here so now if you press and hold this plane you'll see sky and just apply the material to the sky so now when you render this you'll see that it um, renders it with the sky in it so now what you're gonna need to do is you don't want to be you don't want to see the actual environment in your renderer so right click on the sky go to cinema 4d tags compositing and uh, uncheck scene by camera so now when you render it you j just see the text so right now you don't see much because there are no reflections this is just there's not even a material on this text so if you just go to window and content browser you can find some quick and easy materials that you can then modify so if you go to presets 
visualize materials you'll find a bunch of different materials you can choose from so if you go to metal you can just choose gold and then if you go to synthetic you can choose carbon fiber which are the two materials that I used so for carbon fiber just apply it to the text boom and then for the gold apply it to the text as well and for selection so you can just hit this material and then under selection um, hold shift and hit C to make a capital C and then press 1 that basically only shows the front so you won't you won't you won't see the gold anywhere but the front of the text so if you render this you'll be able to see it um, in a quick second yes there we go so as you can see the gold is only showing up on the front not the side on the side we have the carbon fi fiber material that we applied Here we go looking good let's see how this looks and give it a quick render yeah, as you can see the carbon fibers on the side and the gold is on the front so doesn't look super impressive currently and that's because the main lighting comes from the fiery fire uh, from like the fireballs that come from the sky so it's pretty easy to do you need a plugin called turbulence fd for it you can also do it with um the pyro cluster which comes with cinema 4d and i will do a separate tutorial on how to use that um later and you could just follow that tutorial if you don't have turbulence fd and you could probably get a decent result out of that but if you want to do uh like good fire simulations you should definitely check out turbulence fd so um before we make the fire we need an emitter so i'm gonna go to simulate particles emitter and i'm gonna raise this up and i'm gonna rotate it so it's facing down and by holding shift you get to move it in 10 degree increments so negative 90 degrees and we're gonna stretch this out so it covers up more of our scene there we go that looks pretty good that's actually a lot so we can bring this down a little and this down okay perfect so if you go all the way back and hit play you'll see that it's emitting some particles but if you render nothing happens because we did not assign anything to those particles so right now they're just dots in your viewer and when you render you don't see anything at all so in order for something to come out let's just save this project so in order for something to come out you need to assign something in this case we're gonna do a sphere so we're gonna make the sphere pretty small so maybe like 10 a radius of 10 centimeters and just apply it under the emitter and just hide the sphere so you don't see it and under emitter you can go to particle and do show objects uh, maybe actually yes if you do actually need to see it so now when you hit play you'll be able to see the the balls falling down so they're falling at a consistent rate which is not something I want to do because they're they're falling just slow and not in any interesting way so what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna select sphere and we are gonna go to simulation tags rigid body and when you hit play now the balls are falling like there's gravity so let's watch this through the camera perfect so the only thing I would do is I would slow down the speed so I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna go to edit project settings dynamics time scale 50 so now the time is twice as slow so now everything is basically happening in slow motion so now these balls are falling and they're basically going pretty slow so what we're going to need to do now is we're going to give a compositing tag to this as well. Compositing, 
seen by camera. That way, when we render, we don't see the actual balls because we are going to use those balls to simulate the fire. So let's just save this once again and let's start working on the fire. So how to use Turbulence FD is you go to Plugins, Turbulence FD, Container, and you need to make the container as big as where you'll be doing everything. So let's just make this like a thousand and this a thousand and this a thousand. And I'm just going to raise this up and I'm also just going to stretch this out more. So maybe like a thousand four hundred. So this should be good enough because um, it's just covering everything that's in the frame. Um, yeah, I don't think you'll be seeing any fire going down past that point. Let's see. Okay, it'll need to be a little taller, so 1,500, and we'll bring it down a little. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. So before any of these go past this zone, the camera's already panned up, so you will not see any weird like flame being cut off. So that is perfect. So let's change the voxel size right away to 10 and hit enter. That way the quality is pretty low, so you can simulate it pretty quickly um, and then play with the settings a lot more. So let's go back to our camera. And so to make the fire appear from the spheres, you need to go to the sphere, right click on it, go to Turbulence FD, Turbulence FD emitter, and go to temperature value and press 1. So I'm just going to get out of my camera and just so I'll be able to see everything. And then just go to plugins, Turbulence FD simulation window. Um, let's save this once again. And before I actually start simulating, let's choose where this is going to get saved. So for simulation caches, hit browse. And I'm just going to save this on a hard drive that has a lot of space. So I'm just going to go in here, tutorial, and um, I'm just going to call this cache. So in here, um, I'll be making all of my simulation because um, it might take a lot of space. So be careful where you save it. So if you don't have too much space on like your desktop or something, do not save it to your desktop. So let's make a new uh, cache and rename it to... 10 SM so it's because it's a 10 centimeter uh, resolution for the voxels so instead of having the emitter um, on the sphere you need to put it on the actual emitter and then after that just hit start and uh, hit yes and uh, let's watch this happen in real time so now you're seeing some balls falling and uh, some smoke happening from them This uh, should be good for now, so I'm just going to hit stop, and I'm going to look at at the way it looks through the render. So let's just do a quick render of the fire and see how it looks. So as you can see, it just looks like a straight line. It doesn't look too nice. So let's go to the container settings, go into simulation, turbulence, Let's bring it up to 10 and make the largest size 5. So I'm going to save that. And next thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to go to my mode text, um, go to simulation tags, collider body. That way, when the balls fall, when the, they can interact with the actual text. So if they like start touching the text, the fireballs will just bounce off. That way it will look a lot nicer and actually work with it a lot better. So I'm just going to decrease the amount of segments on the sphere to 18 just so it works faster. And on the emitter, um, the birth rate actually, yeah, everything is fine. I'm going to stop the emission at frame 200, save, go to turbulence um, FD container, and I'm just going to make the size 6 just so the quality looks a little nicer I'm gonna make a new one and I'm gonna rename it and call it 6SM 
Perfect. So I'm just going to go into my camera and I'm going to hit start. So let's wait for this to simulate and I'll cut back to when it's done. So after this taking uh, forever to simulate, I, uh, I realized that the fireballs might be a little too big. So I'm going to decrease them in size. But this isn't looking too bad. This is looking pretty nice. Uh, let's give it a quick render. There's going to be a couple of settings that you will need to change with the actual render because the fire right now literally just looks like a like a like a yellow blob, maybe like a yellow lightsaber. So we're already getting some nice little reflection from the fire over here and a nice reflection on the E. But yeah, let's play let's play some more with the with the settings of the fire. So let's go into the container settings, into rendering, fire shader, and we're just going to make opacity 0.5. Let's give it a quick render over here and let's hope that it looks a lot nicer than before. So I mean slightly we're not seeing any too crazy of a difference um, in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the emitter settings. Uh, change the temperature value to maybe like 0 0.8. And we're going to change the sphere size to 5. Save it. And um, when, when you're doing this for rendering, obviously you'll change the voxel size to something a lot smaller. Maybe a 4 or a 3. Um, one, if you're really feeling like you want to wait the entire decade for this to simulate, but, uh, whatever you prefer to be the quality that you're going for, but I'm just gonna, uh, simulate this again really quickly and I'll get back to you after it's done. All right. So we are back. So let's play this through and see how it looks. Looking pretty nice. We're getting some good variation of movement and displacement in uh, in the flame. So let's render in the viewer, see how it looks. All right, so this is looking pretty good. As you can see, we're getting some um, some nice nice highlights on the text and uh, the fire is looking pretty nice especially um, once it starts fading away like uh, in sections here so it looks pretty good um, I think it's ready to go to the uh, the render settings and uh, get this set up so maybe the only thing I'll change is once again I'll just decrease the opacity to maybe 0 0.2 and uh, let's just give this section a quick render. Let's see how it looks. So I'm going to keep it um, at this. Looks nice. Let's go to the render settings. So I'm going to keep the physical settings at low just so I can render it pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to keep this where it is now. We don't need any of this. We are not going to do a multi-pass because with Turbulence FD you will not get the smoke. So even if you do like a depth or um, like a vector pass, uh, we're not really going to get anything out of it. So let's go to output. And I have the simulation up to frame 166. So I'm going to go from 0 to 166. Actually, it doesn't start at zero. Um, the camera starts panning up at at like 55. Yeah, so I'm gonna start with 40. I'm just gonna start with 40. 40. Um, save this. Uh, settings look good. I'm gonna make it. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it 1080. I'm gonna make it 720 just for the sake of this video. Um, save, uh, we're going to do EXR, open EXR, alpha channel, 32 bits, um, sure, we're going to do, 
Yeah, we're going to do uh, zip in blocks of 16 scan lines. And let's choose a location. So, um, same thing as here. And I'm just going to call this um, C4D render test. And hit save. So, let's double check. Manual from 40 to 166, 720p, EXR, we have a location, alpha channel, um, the fire, and the physical render. Perfect. Looks good. The only thing I'll do is I'll just go to the camera and uh, change the f-stop to 1.8 just so we can get a little uh, blurriness on, um, on the smoke if it's too far or too close. And uh, you can just hit render and... Um, I'll, uh, I'll just let this uh, render and uh, I'll fast forward it. Okay, so I think we have enough uh, rendered. So let's, uh, let's stop the render. And uh, let's look for our file sequence to m make sure that we have everything. Yeah, so... Um, we have all these EXRs that we are going to then put into After Effects. So that is going to be the part two of the tutorial. So this is all that you need from Cinema 4D. So now we have that. Now that everything is ready, we are uh, good to go for part two and um, adding all of the effects in post in After Effects. So I'll see you guys in the second tutorial right after this so if uh, you're not subscribed make sure to hit subscribe and um, I'll be making a lot more tutorials in the future um, hopefully you enjoy them and learn something new so I'll see you guys next time